Hello, I'm Liz Zorab and this is By The Farm and today I want to talk about five perennial vegetables uh, that I'm growing this year. And the first one uh, is a globe artichoke. Now this will grow uh, wide and tall so I'm giving it plenty of space to grow in and hopefully it will grow really well and give me one or two artichokes this year and then from next year onwards absolutely romp away. And while I'm here and I've got a hole in the ground I'm just going to pop in a few daffodil bulbs because although this is a vegetable uh, and it's growing in my food forest there's no reason it shouldn't look attractive too. Daffodils on the other hand not edible uh, <laughs> really not to be eaten at all uh, particularly the bulbs the next thing this needs uh, is to be watered in well and then have its mulch and then a bit of protection I think the ducks could be on their way over uh, to, <laughs> to give their approval I spent a couple of hours or so this morning uh, creating a new border in the food forest well the ducks have found it, uh, they seem quite happy with it. They will no doubt now go through it, uh, pull out any uh, slugs or snails, and hopefully slug eggs as well. Uh, and then I'll have to go back in <laughs> and secure all the plants down again, just to make sure they haven't uprooted any of them. Okay, so next I'm gonna put a bit of mulch. And finally, I'm going to uh, pop a cloche over it. Now you can use uh, you can use a glass cloche, a plastic one, just a piece of fleece. You could pop some sticks into the ground, put a bit of netting over it, uh, a little bit of hessian, whatever you have that will just protect it uh, for a little bit. It's not absolutely necessary uh, to protect it. I like to do it because I know uh, this little part of the garden does get some fairly fearsome frosts when other parts of the garden have none. This bit here <laughs> will stay white for quite a long part of the day and behind me there there is another uh, globe artichoke. Uh, that's the only surviving one uh, of six uh, because this is quite a frosty pocket. Uh, so why am I planting it here? Well I'll protect it a bit now and then it should be fine once it's established. The next one uh, is asparagus. Now I actually have an asparagus bed uh, which I planted last year. Uh, but to, to plant asparagus you buy, uh, you can buy little crowns like this with these long uh, tenderly bits. Those are actually their roots. Uh, and the little bit at the top here is the crown uh, and that's where it's going to grow from. So you want to support the roots. So the easiest way to do that is to make a little a little molehill a mini mountain and to spread uh, the roots out over the hill so that the crown is supported and the roots go down it just like that and then cover it up now asparagus doesn't like uh, heavy soil uh, it likes quite free draining soil so it is worth uh, putting it in a raised bed if you can and if you can't well you just put them wherever you can because these are a long-term investment uh, there's the crown of the asparagus plant just there uh, once they're planted and they're established the asparagus uh, will feed you for 20 or 30 years so it's worth looking after And obviously this needs watering in and I will mulch the whole bed very soon. And the next three vegetables are completely new to me. Um, I don't think I've even heard of them uh, until very recently. So my third perennial vegetable that I'm planting this year is Chinese artichoke. I've bought these from a company called Incredible Vegetables based in Devon. Uh, they sell all sorts of, well, incredible vegetables. So these Chinese artichokes are, are these little tubers, little knobbly tubers, long and thin. Uh, I've got to say when I first saw them, they reminded me a bit of maggots, <laughs> but I'm sure uh, that once they've grown and they've cooked, 
they should be a, a welcome addition to our meal uh, they're crunchy they've got a nutty taste um, and uh, I gather they're fairly similar uh, to water chestnuts incredible vegetables uh, have very kindly said uh, that I can use some of their images so this is what Chinese artichoke looks like as it's growing and I'm really looking forward uh, to trying this one the next one is called Babington leeks. Now this is a perennial leek uh, which you grow uh, much like a leek but rather than pulling it out of the ground uh, you cut the stem off and you uh, harvest that bit and you leave, uh, you leave the root and the bulbous bit at the bottom in the ground and it will grow again from there and it will also form uh, bulbs around the edge of it to expand out. And if you want to propagate them uh, you leave them to go to flower uh, and then the, the seed heads will form little bulb bulbs that you can then uh, plant to increase the number of babington leeks that you have. And to cook them, uh, you use them just in the same way that you would uh, you would use ordinary leeks. Um, so they have that mild oniony taste with a slight hint of garlic. I really like the sound of them. I'm really looking forward to trying them. And uh, the main harvest time is early spring to early summer. So in that hungry gap and anything that helps us get through that hungry gap when there's not very much else uh, to pick fresh from the garden well that has to be a good thing and my fifth perennial vegetable uh, is Hablitzia tamanoides uh, or it's a Caucasian spinach now this is a climbing spinach I'm so excited about this uh, once again photographs are courtesy of incredible vegetables I'm really looking forward to getting these in the ground and growing them up over an archway. Again, it is another crop uh, for the late winter, early spring period uh, where you just take off the, the, the young shoots and leave the rest to grow. Another plant for that hungry gap. If you decide to buy from Incredible Vegetables, uh, please let them know I sent you there. Uh, I'm not on a commission, I don't get any payback, but it would be really nice for them to know uh, that you found them uh, via this video. If you're interested in finding out about some more perennial vegetables uh, that you can grow, uh, hop over to uh, Erica's Little Welsh Garden because today she's also telling you about five uh, perennial fruit and veg uh, that you can grow in your garden right now. And so, wherever you are in the world and whatever you've got planned for today, I hope it's a good one. And I also hope you'll join me again next time.